Is my data disagree with the null hypothesis? The answer might be sampling variability. But it doesn't guarantee that it is. It just says it could be. Well, what that means is I really don't know the answer to this question anymore, do I? I can't really tell. In other words, I, I'm not sure. I'm like, okay, well, it could be sampling variability or it could be the null is, null is wrong. I don't know what the answer to this question is, right? So in a high p-value, we can't really answer the question, right? We can't know for sure which one we're dealing with. So we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Okay, so this is why we're, we're not a big fan of high p-values. High p-values, in a sense, means sampling variability could be involved, which means I really don't know the answer to this question. <clears throat> so, so we're not going to say that the null hypothesis is right. A high p-value does not guarantee that the null hypothesis is, is correct. It could be, could be sampling variability. But it might also be that the null is wrong, because I mean, obviously my sample data does disagree with it. And the p-value, you know, even if it's like a 30% p-value, that would only be a 30% probability that it was sampling variability. So the real way to think about this is a low p-value tells you that it's probably not sampling variability, and you sort of know that the null is probably wrong. And a high p-value tells you that... Um, it could be sampling variability, and we don't really know if the null is right or wrong anymore. Sometimes we say we do not have enough evidence to know that the null is wrong. We don't have enough evidence to reject that null hypothesis. So sometimes we say, what we say in that case is, we fail, fail to reject the null hypothesis. We don't say the null hypothesis is correct. We say fail to reject the null hypothesis. A good way to think about it, it's almost like a court of law, right? Like you went into a court case, you guys have probably watched court, court shows and things like that. If a person was found not guilty because there wasn't enough evidence to convict them, does that mean they were totally innocent? Probably mean that's not, right? That doesn't mean they're innocent. It just means that they didn't have enough evidence to convict them. Right? So, being found not guilty in a court of law is, is not synonymous with being innocent. It it's, it's means that you didn't have enough evidence to convict them. That's kind of how this p-value works. Um, the low p-value is actually considered significant evidence. And the high p-value is like you don't have enough evidence to reject the null. So you have evidence to reject the null, or you do not have evidence to reject the null. That doesn't mean that the null is correct if you don't have evidence to reject it. I know that's a hard idea to get around, but that's kind of like the court case I was describing. So the main thing to remember is that when you have a high p-value, you fail to reject the null. Low p-value, close to zero, reject the null. Okay? Now, one thing about evidence is significant evidence. A lot of people make mistakes about p-value. They think a low p-value is always significant evidence. It's actually not. Remember, a hypothesis test is still tied to how well, how good is your sample data. Your sample data has to be representative of the population. That's why we have all those assumptions um, that we looked at in confidence intervals. And we'll have assumptions and hypothesis tests as well to make sure that my sample data is as unbiased as I, I can get it and it, hopefully it's going to be somewhat representative of the population. If you have biased data and your data is not really reflective of the population, then even if I had a low p-value, it's almost like my p-value is not accurate anymore because it comes from bad data. So this significant evidence is really, the low p-value is considered significant evidence as long as your sample data passes assumptions and is relatively unbiased. But a good way to think about it is low p-value, significant evidence, high p-value, um, not significant. Okay? Now, the question might be, well, how low do I have to go, right? How low does the p-value need to be? Well, zero would be great, right? If the p-value is exactly zero, that would be great. But um, we need to sort of know how low should we go. 
And that's where the significance levels come in, or alpha levels. We talked about these last time when, um, when we were talking about critical value calculations um, in hypothesis tests, that these are sort of the opposite of the confidence levels. So we saw that we had a 1% significance level, or a 5% significance level, or a 10% significance level. They're sometimes called alpha levels, with the Greek letter alpha. And you'll see them use um, at a significance level, alpha equals 0.01, or alpha equals 0.05, or alpha equals 0.10 in scientific studies. Now this is what we compare the p-value to. So one of the key things in hypothesis testing is we compare the test statistic to the critical value. We compare the p-value to the significance level. Okay? So the p-value, it has to be lower than the significance level. So how low does the p-value have to be? Lower than the significance level or alpha level. Okay, lower than the significance level. So if my significance level was 5%, right? Significance level lower than 5%. Make sure this is better. Um, Remember, that's the most common one. The most common one is actually 5% significance. Um, then they, I would want my p-value to be lower than 5% to be it, make it unlikely to be sampling variability and to be able to reject the null hypothesis. If it was higher than 5%, then the p-value would be considered too high. And then it could be sampling variability. Okay? Um, and we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. So a scientist actually chooses a significance level. We'll kind of get into in a little later about how to choose which significance level is appropriate for your test and that kind of thing. But just realize that whatever significance level the, the, the um, scientist chose will um, influence um, the numbers. And it will also inf not just influence your critical value, but it will also influence what p-value is considered significant versus not. So if we choose a 5% significance level, our p-value's got to be lower than 5%. If it's higher than the significance level, then it's too high, right? So anything higher than the significance level. Again, I'll put the Greek letter alpha there, because a lot of times in scientific reports you'll see alpha equals something. So that's sort of the rule. So a low p-value tells me it's lower than significant. Uh, tells me uh, it's lower than the significance level. Unlikely to be sampling variability is significant evidence if your data is unbiased, and re we can reject the null hypothesis. We're pretty sure the null hypothesis is wrong. If it's a high p-value, we're higher than the significance level. It could be sampling variability. It's not significant evidence, and we would. We're not really sure if the null is right or wrong. We say we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? Fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? Let's look at a couple quick examples here. Okay? So let's look at a couple quick examples here. So we got a p-value of 0.327 and a significance level of 5%. Um, so, is this a low, let's assume that this data met all the assumptions going on. This is just about reading the p-value now. Let's assume we got some good data. What would this p-value, is this a high p-value or is this a low p-value? Okay, the mistake a lot of students, especially beginning students make, is you forget that this is a proportion, it's a decimal equivalent of a percentage, and this is actually a percentage. So never compare a proportion to a percentage. I always have, I always have a few students every semester that will say, oh yeah, 0.327 is lower than 5. This must be a low p-value. No, no. 0.327, what would that be as a percentage? Well, if I multiply that by 100, what would that be? Well, if I did that, multiply that by 100, move the decimal two places to the right, we get 32.7%. Is that lower or higher than our 5% significance level? Higher, right? A lot higher. This is a high p-value. Okay, so always convert your p-value back into a percentage before you compare it. Now, if your significance level was written as a decimal, and oftentimes it is, 5% as a decimal would have been 0.05. So we'd sometimes get alpha equals 0.05. 
Well, that then we can compare the proportion to the proportion. 0.327 is bigger than 0.05. Or you can compare the percentage to the percentage. Don't compare a proportion to a percentage. Always, always make sure they're in the, the same form before you compare them. So if this is a high p-value, right? This is a high p-value. What do we know? This is a high p-value. Well, we know all of this, right? We know that it could be sampling variability. We know it's uh, not significant evidence. And we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? So this could be sampling variability. And we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, let's try one more real quick. So let's suppose I got a p-value of uh, 1.74 times 10 to the negative 5. And our significance level alpha is 1%. I'll just say significance level 1%. Okay, now this is getting weird a little bit, right? The, what's this number here? 1.74 times 10 to the negative 5. Remember, p-values are numbers that are usually very close to zero. If you remember, if you get a really, really tiny number in science, we sometimes write this in what we call scientific notation. Some of you guys have probably heard of that before, scientific notation. Um, this times 10 to the negative 5 just means move the decimal five places to the left. So in this problem, we're going to want to move the decimal. So we're going to move the decimal five places to the left to get the actual number. So think about it this way. If I have my 1.74 here, all right, I'm going to move the decimal one, two, three, four, five. That's where the new decimal will go. And you'll need some placeholders. You'll actually need four zeros as placeholders. So the actual decimal uh, proportion for the p-value is that, 0 0.000174. That's what this means. That's actually a really good p-value. We like p-values like that.